Hey YouTube, um, I just want to make a, a quick video, it may not be quick, uh, there's a lot to cover, but uh, there was some interest in a recent project I did um, over on the Negatives Positives uh, Facebook group, um, and so I thought I'd make a video and kind of explain what I did uh, to use my ANSCO 3A camera. So the ANSCO 3A camera is this beast here. And besides looking really nice, it's actually a pretty good camera. And it's fun and, and different. And I like shooting old cameras. Um, now the problem with this camera, the only problem, the, the bellows are light tight. The shutter uh, works just fine. Um, the only problem is that the film is no longer made. It's uh, a format called 122. This camera is from the early part of the last century, um, and they just don't make this film anymore. Now, these cameras that were this size, 122 format, uh, were also called postcard cameras because they um, shoot a, a, a nice big negative that can then be contact printed onto um, onto paper and, and made into postcards. So I, I actually did do this um, with a um, I loaded it with photographic paper and shot it and uh, then I developed the paper as a reversal so I got a direct positive um, image and I made postcards and I uh, it was kind of a laborious process Sorry about that, I'm dropping things. Um, because I, sh I made 20 of the same uh, postcard. So I, what I did was I had 20 pieces of paper cut in, a, in the right size to fit into the camera. And I would put the camera in a dark bag and uh, load the paper into it. And then I would take it out, put it on my tripod, take the shot, and then take it back to the dark bag, unload that piece of paper that, that's been exposed, put another one in, and repeat. I did that 20 times and uh, made 20 postcards. Um, but they look like this, and it's a lighthouse there, and this is in San Diego in Point Loma. Uh, and so, and, and they come out in nice postcard size, and you can send them off to your friends, and it's, it, was, it was a fun project. So, but what I really wanted uh, to do was then to use roll film uh, the, way, the way the camera was intended to be used. Um, but like I said, they don't make that, that size film anymore. Um, so, and there's, you can buy adapters to shoot 120 film in these and you get kind of a panoramic uh, 120 sort of image. Um, the image size on this camera is uh, three, and a, three and a quarter inches by five and a half. So that's the negative size. And uh, so it's big. Uh, it's not, you know, large format, but it's bigger than most medium formats uh, too. So let me show you the, uh, the rolls here. And first I'll compare it with, uh, so here's a 120 spool. Or, sorry, this is a 122 and this is a 120. So um, you can see the, the size difference there. The, the center core is about the same diameter. So I don't know if you can see that. But uh, so there's that. And then just for comparison, for those of you who don't shoot medium format, there's 35 millimeter uh, next to the 120 or 122 spool. So um, so what film am I going to use? Because you, know, you need film that's then at least uh, three and a quarter inches wide. Uh, well it just so happens that I uh, found on a large auction site a large spool of 500 feet of Recordac 
film. This is microfilm, so it's not um, not intended for uh, pictorial use. It was intended to make copies of documents and make microfiche. Um, but the nice thing about that is then that it's a very fine-grained film. Um, the the downside is that it's about ISO uh, one, so it's slow. It's super slow. Um, so that's that's you know just something you have to overcome <laughs> when you're when you want to use a hundred year old camera. You're gonna you're gonna have some obstacles. Um, so. Here is what the film looks like, uh, not in the bag, not in the spool, uh, and you can see it's yellow, <laughs> and it's got uh, so it's got this kind of a strange yellow. I don't know if you'd even call it an anti-halation layer, because it it's uh, you know it's transparent, so it's not really preventing halos from forming, uh, like you'd see it on a regular 120 or or 35 millimeter film. Um, I'm not really sure what the yellow backing is all about, but it's there. So, uh, so that's that's what I have, and it's wide. And generally, I take this in in the dark, and I use it just a guillotine cutter. Um, this is red insensitive, so I, so you can handle it under a red safe light. Um, and so usually, I take it in and, and use a guillotine cutter just to cut. Um, four by five sheets and um, I load it into my speed graphic and, and it makes uh, nice negatives like this. So the base comes out um, clear. It's you know old film. It expired in December of 1979. Um, so there's probably some base fog there but uh, you can get the idea that the base is clear uh, like a black and white film should be, and it is very fine grained. The emulsion is very thin, so it uh, it develops fairly quickly. It it clears in the fixer in a matter of seconds. Um, the one thing that I did find out about this is my go-to developer is usually uh, Rodinol. Rodinol does not develop this film. It doesn't make an image at all. It just comes out clear. Uh, so now I use Xtol, or I make a, a homemade version of Xtol called, called Mytol um, with phenidone and some other chemicals. Uh, but that works really well. And especially if you, uh, so this negative, I, I did a stand development for about an hour um, in Xtol 1 plus 2 dilution so uh, so it does make good images they're nice and scannable I haven't tried um, printing them yet but maybe someday uh, all right so so then now my problem is I have this film I have the camera I have the spools but the film is wider than the spool right so um, so then we have to do what's called slitting the film down, which means cutting it lengthwise uh, down to the right width. So I, uh, I didn't feel like buying a slitter and I, I did find one on, on uh, Etsy, uh, but the, the guy said, uh, I contacted him and he said that the widest he could go was 70 millimeters, which is not even close. This is 105. So, um, so I'm, I decided I'm going to have to make one myself. So that's what I did. I made a slitter, and it's super simple. Anyone can do this. I am not. I am not a particularly handy kind of person, um, but I like doing things m myself. Uh, so, um, so I made the slitter, and it's just made it out of foam core. So it's cheap and easy. And so I'll just explain briefly how how I made it and and uh, what it is. So I just cut two pieces of foam core. <laughs> Turn it back up here and show you. So this foam core is white on one side and black on the other side. Um, and I cut two pieces to 
uh, I think it was uh, 125 millimeters across. And, uh, and then, I don't know, maybe 400 millimeters long, 40 centimeters long, maybe. Uh, and then, so you can't just sandwich the film in there. Um, it needs to have a little bit of space so you don't scratch it as you're, you're going to pull it through here, kind of lengthwise that way. Um, you don't want to scratch it, so you need a little space in there. So I found an old uh, picture frame backing that was made out of MDF, uh, which is just sort of a pressed, a densely pressed paper. It's kind of like cardboard, only only sturdier. Um, and so I cut two little strips of that and put them on the what I'll call the base of the slitter. Okay, so that this channel in between them is 105 millimeters. So the film goes in there like that. And it slides, you know, slides along like that. All right, so that's the, that's the base of it. And then the top was just another piece of foam core. And then I kind of did some measuring and, and uh, marking and measuring and measure twice, cut once. Uh, and used, just used a, uh, like a box cutter razor. And I just kind of shoved it in there at the right place so that it sticks out. I don't know if you can see this. It sticks out right there. Uh, so that's on the inside here. So that when I go into the dark, and again, you, I can do this under red light because of the film, but if you had some other film you were slitting that was panchromatic, then you wouldn't want a, any lights on at all. Um, so I would put this in here, and I leave a little tongue hanging out right there so that I have something to pull on. All right. And then I get this situated, sort of. It's kind of hard doing it up in the air like this, but you get the idea. So you make this, this kind of sandwich and then you just press it together. All right. Now that razor punctures the film. All right. Now, just to make sure things don't get too squirrely, put some rubber bands around it just to hold it all together. Because what you don't want when you're in the dark and you're trying to do something with any kind of precision is for your apparatus to come apart. <laughs> all right. So just a few rubber bands just like that. There's my razor. All right, so now in the dark. Oh, I, I skipped it. I skipped an important step. Backing paper. So uh, on these cameras, there is no counter, frame counter. It's this ruby window. So you have to be able to see the picture or the, the number of your frame uh, through that window. And the way that's done, for those of you who shoot 120 film, you probably have shot a camera like that before. Uh, and the backing paper on the back of the film has uh, numbers on it. You just wind it and wind the camera until you see the number come into the little window and that's when you stop. Uh, so, but obviously I had to make my own backing paper because the 120 backing paper isn't wide enough then I get, you know, light leaks kind of through the window and onto the film and um, I didn't want that. So, I bought a giant sheet of um, this, I think it's gardener's plastic of some sort. Um, it's like a 10 foot by 10 foot sheet, but it's this, it's black on one side and it's white on the other and it's completely opaque. Um, and I think, actually, I think uh, the cannabis growers use it to um, block up their windows and think, make tents and things like that. To, conceal their grow operations, but um, 
but it works for backing paper because <laughs> it's opaque and it's really, really thin. So it's uh, the problem with doing this with paper uh, is that most papers are too thick. If you can get them opaque, they're too thick to really roll up and, and then it gets more complicated. Um, so I just cut this to the to length and I found the, the specification for 122 backing paper on Fotrio um, somewhere and someone had measured out, had, had gotten a roll of, of 122 film and measured out the paper so thank you to that person. Um, made my job a little easier. Um, so I'm looking for scissors here but I don't have them which is okay I guess. Uh, but so what what I would do in the now back in the dark I start pulling this through and you can see here's the slit that's where the, the razor poked through and now it's cutting it as I pull through and uh, so I'm going to uh, just tear this because I don't have my scissors here normally I would I would cut that piece off to right to where the where the slit starts um, and then I get my trusty backing paper and I have it spooled up on partially onto um, my spool here to right where to where the film start line is All right, and then I stick that into the backing paper and I line it up and I start rolling And when I get close to the slitter, I pull and I roll some more. When I get the close, I pull. Okay, and you would go obviously all the way down to um, as far as you needed to. For the length, um, down on the on the opposite end of the paper, I put a little piece of tape here so I can see it and I can feel it. When I get to that point, then I cut the film off and uh, just finish rolling it up. And you know, once it's all rolled up, then it's you know ready to go into the camera and and, uh, and so that's what I did. I ended up with a few shots that I didn't quite have the developing um, step figured out because I don't obviously for a regular developing tank like a Patterson tank I don't have a spool that will hold film this 122 122 film um, so I'll maybe cover that in a different video how I figured out the the development but uh, I did get a negative here's I don't know if you, you can't really see it but it's a it's a tree <laughs> picture of a tree uh, pretty common for me um, but uh, yeah it came out nice and that would be you know big enough to make contact prints and and uh, make postcards send off to friends um, so that's it that's kind of the my adventure in uh, getting my ansco 3a camera loaded up with 122 roll film and I hope you enjoyed the video uh, leave me a comment or or uh, if you have any tips <laughs> to, to help me do this better I'm I'm wide open to suggestions have a great day